And the population, I will start, I didn't think about stuff like that, but I don't know what it is. You see, I read this word, seismicity. I couldn't find a, a precise and uh, intellectually valid definition. So I think, it's, uh, I'm afraid it's an empty word, and also a confusing word, because as I said, I think, maybe in one of the comments I made, anyway, you put everything inside. Uh, so and and so it cannot be a good uh, concept. It's not a concept, in fact, and it's not an explanation. So, so because, uh, uh, but I quite agree that we we have the same because to what you said this morning, I, I was in full agreement with you. Uh, but I think we should uh, banish you see the bad words in uh, for the mind because you see they, they they don't clear your mind. They they make it you see darker. Uh, globalization is a paradox. This globalization, as I said, well, there were so many before, is a paradox because it's both about link and delinking. See, so that's difficult to think. You see, you need to have another type you see, of logic than the Western logic to understand <laughs> that. You see, maybe uh, I think some uh, Eastern Asia logics can. <coughs> better understand, you see, or, or you must have, uh, have a, a philosophical culture, and of course, if you know Hegel, no problem, you know, link, the linking, you know, it's taken in uh, the process of how we move, and, and so it's about networks, you see, globalization is very well, often defined, you see, by Gaster, by classic novel, like a network planet, a network society, the networks of all kinds. And it's about fragmentation. So it's, uh, it's, if you don't think at the same time, you see that there are two things you don't understand. And I would say it's, it's like a triad or a triad, I don't know, a triad. Angle. Or triad. I prefer triad because I think it's quite uh, a good word in, the, in our global world. Uh, homogenization, fragmentation, hierarchy. You must think the three together. I did not invent that. It's a famous French philosopher who passed away already quite a number of years ago. And uh, Henri, uh, sociologist Henri Lefebvre, who was saying that. And I think it's a very good uh, uh, map for understanding. Uh, in, uh, 50 years ago, there were the 68 movements all across the world, you see. And uh, uh, it was about uh, to see. Uh, forgetting about hierarchy and the new age, the 21st century is a century of hierarchy with, of course, winners, losers, and a huge hierarchy. 100, uh, uh, the half of the world population is concentrated in 3% of winners' land. The, the, the half of the global wealth is produced on 1% of the uh, of emerged uh, land. So, and globalization is also something very extremely, I was surprised that it was uh, applauded by those active, in, for example, in the UN system, or you see, as well, because globalization is, uh, 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 is focusing, is targeting universality. You see, it's global, the, uh, way, the play we are, we are saying now, it's globalization versus universality. Universality is a major problem for the UN, but also for the international construction of human rights, which is based on the principle of universality. <coughs> and so this new world, in fact, is a world of selective matchings. So I don't get the time to define that, but if you have questions, I can answer after. Selective matchings, uh, it's, I pass on that. You see, I'm going to give a few examples, finally. You see, family is uh, 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 torn apart uh, now, you see, by this process of, 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 of uh, selective matchings, but I will, uh, I can come back after if somebody wants, but uh, as education is awfully torn apart, you see, by selective matching to sum up where now you see health for the excluded, you, know, and, uh, you have pay paradise for the very wealthy, and uh, in between, you see, you have kind of purgatories for the depressed mi middle class, which don't know exactly where <laughs> they are heading for sometimes nowhere, because you see, they have lost the battle, 
And so there is this uh, education was a found fundament in enlightenment, in the system of universality, the fundament of everything. Condorcet, the great foresight man, in a, his famous book, <laughs> he has envisioned all that, and even uh, women and emancipation and so on. It's torn apart now, because education is not bridging the gap, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, widening the gap, ceaselessly. Uh, the city is very important for the question of democracy that we have because all what, what I say is about the, 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 the decline, the sharp decline of democracy, of course, because the education was a key element. The city is now, you have urban apartheid. That is to say, the disappearance of the, of the public space. I don't get the time to, but I can come back. I, I wrote a lot on all this topic. By the way, I wanted to mention, since I don't have the time to give a lot, uh, uh, I made two uh, lectures which are on TV 2101 on, you see, humanity and fragmentation in the global age, uh, and uh, another, the, the crisis of democracy, but unfortunately they are in French. So, because I delivered that, you see, in, not on, in Beijing, in English, in the Academy of Latinity, in Tunis too, and on that end, uh, in the uh, TV to, to 2100, since it is a French TV, it's, uh, it's uh, in French. So, which are the consequences politically of uh, uh, it's uh, on politics? Let's take uh, the question of politics, democracy, states, and uh, uh, globalization is dissolving or tends to dissolve, of course, not in one. Uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, by, by steps, you see the multicultural empires in Europe from history. Two major examples, in the start of the process of the new globalization, the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and of Yugoslavia. We are in, in the former Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was a small empire of the Serbian Serbs <coughs> under the hegemony of Serbian nationalism, the kingdom of Yugoslavia, well before Tito. And so this is, uh, uh, and the other empires have disappeared, but may, maybe the people did not notice that. When Sudan, you see, was split apart, Sudan is a remnant of the old Egyptian and uh, after Anglo-Egyptian empire. It, was, it is not a nation state, Sudan, it's an empire, it broke apart. And the seventh part, which became a new state, broke apart again, you see, with a civil and military, military war and other examples. In the future, I don't want to make any predictions, but if uh, my analysis is right, you might have very important multicultural advice which could be, which could be threatened by, fragment, by fragmentation. So remember, you understand what I have in mind, but you have several in Africa, in Asia, we have large, large multicultural empires surviving, and uh, we are constantly threatened by fragmentation. Uh, uh, for example, India, India, you know, the Indian, the British Indian Empire already you see, was torn about several times. You see, at the independence of India, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and so after Pakistan was torn about again, and what about the future? Because it's not, it's a, to, to some extent, it's a nation state, yeah, but basically it's a multicultural empire inherited from history. And so the second consequence, I will not develop that because I think we, we address the question, is the crisis of regional organization and on the top list, of course, European Union. Because it's, uh, but you, you could name uh, Mercosur, Unasur, Alena, and so on, all kind of. The, all this is absolutely uh, blast, you see, by, by, by globalization. And the, the huge fragmentation of more possible states or nation states could, is brewing. It could be fed, for example, uh, not only by the dissolution of these multicultural empires, I hope, but by the differentiation and even discriminating effects of globalization on states and nation states. Uh, and uh, because this new globalization makes strong nations stronger, the, those nations which are strong, powerful, and uh, which have a kind of cohesion are made stronger. And an example, Germany, 
maybe it will not last for other reasons, but for the time being, Germany was, which was, was shy, was a regional power, always listening to uh, Washington, to Paris, and so on, is, is, has turned a global actor again. Germany is again a global actor, as it had been, uh, unfortunately, I would say, for all the world history. You see, before you see the Second World War. So, in case of, uh, uh, and <coughs> it also it break apart, but this globalization is dividing and, and possibly breaking apart uh, weak nation states, I would say, or weak, weak so called nation states, which are not really nation states which are eth ethnically, historically, linguistically, or economically divided. So in case of uh, uh, Western Europe, I will not echo Eastern Europe, which was in the, uh, in the wake you see, of the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. But in the case of Western Europe, we are now, you see, in a process which is now blocked to some extent, but which is growing of decolonizing Western Europe. When you speak about Catalonia, Scotland, <laughs> and see, it's a question of decolonizing because, oh, it was a word we could, we could not pronounce in Western Europe. But it is that, because the first colony of Britain was Ireland. Mm -hmm. And when Ireland got its independence, the British elites were maybe mad and angry, but most of the world applauded. We applauded at the independence of Baltic countries, right? and now Catalonia, Scotland. But I think the process is improving because Catalonia, of course, think that they should have an ambassador in Washington, in New York, in Brussels, the remaining member of the European Union, and playing global. You see, as the, as the Catalonian Empire <coughs> did. You see, under a different name uh, in, <laughs> in the Middle Ages, since it was a major aristocratic power. So, so, in case of your, uh, uh, so I address that, and a key element which favors that is simple. Before, you needed a large market, you see. So, it favored the creation of big or rather big nation states, even when the people did not want really to live together. But there was this, uh, I think, uh, Gramsci, uh, when he commented on Machiavelli, said exactly that, you know, about, uh, and Machiavelli had already that in mind, too. And so, the, this is, now it's different, because with the globalization, there has been, you see, a, a more global open market. But, uh, the trend, even if now, there is a contradiction of the new protectionism. There was a sharp fall, you see, of tariffs. So when you have a, 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 a global market, you can be very small, and you can be a global actor. And I give, a, a, of course, the, the, I will give a worst example of that, because it failed because of the madness, you see, of the bad. Iceland, 300,000 inhabitants, they play financially global with their banks. And they collapsed because they, they had forgotten that uh, hybris makes the people mad, as the old Greek were saying. So they played too madly, but if they had played more wisely, they would have won their bets. They had banks in China, you know, for example. So the state is the world. And since uh, another factor, very quickly, before I conclude, because my conclusion I already gave it yesterday, so maybe I'm not going to give it. And we have a question of the rights of indigenous peoples. Nobody mentioned that. It, it's in, in very <laughs> the middle of our topic. Because in 2007, the UN General Assembly adopted a declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples. Some, maybe some people have forgotten. Peoples, not people, I don't know, before, I don't know, not the S, peoples. Recognizing the right to self determination, that is to say, to create new states, <coughs> independence. There are 5,000 5, indigenous peoples on Earth. Of course, many of them are very small, very small and weak. But if, suppose that 5% of them uh, are, are succeeding in creating their states, you count, and it's 250. 
250. And you know that there are in, the, uh, in Burma, for example, there have been wars since decades about that, about the right of indigenous people to create their state. Karen, Shan, and all the others in Burma, that's, that's it. So you, you could, uh, maybe uh, it's going to, to be necessary one day to, you see, to, to, to find a, a wider room in the UN, because if you have 400, 400 member states, you can imagine. So, uh, uh, of course, and you must, we must also consider, since I mentioned the necessity of doing foresight, to examine all the scenarios. The globalization could also result in deglobalization. Uh, maybe it's an illusion because, you see, it was the case. With we the, are running out of time. Yes, I finished. You see, I finished. <laughs> yeah. that, that it was the case of the pre previous. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. And I would conclude by saying, since I, I, I said, you see, what I had in mind for a proposal to us, the problem is that if we, we have forgotten the history is, uh, can always be tragic and is always tragic. We have forgotten that on the internet, you know, it's the consumer and a Muslim <coughs> society. And it's about war and peace. Since I said that on the other days, you see, whether you, you, we must understand that it's not, it is not exactly only a symposium topic, but it's the question of life or death for humankind. And that's why I propose a new democracy, since the old one is uh, uh, doomed, uh, as Alexander <coughs> rightly pointed out this morning, a new democracy, and that was is favoring the revamping of foresight in the international, at least in the international communities. Uh, it is an absolute necessity, because if not, you are going blindly towards the end. 